us in time. Too us. Yeah. What's up, guys? I'm Charlie. That's Kirby. Hey. Today we're back at recapping in Everglades National Park. Why? Because Kirby likes wrestling crocodiles. Um, no. Actually, here to check out some of the coolest trees in the entire world. These guys around me. Mangroves. All right, so first, a little bit of background. While Pat was away at school, Kirby and I decided to take a quick trip down to the southern tip of Florida for a little canoeing that turned into a lot of canoeing. Like a lot of canoeing. Like 27 hours of canoeing over the course of three days. So much canoeing. We spent almost the whole time navigating through these insane tree tunnels. How neat are these? Super neat and confusing. We got lost a few times, but we figured out that these tunnels were pretty much entirely made of trees called mangroves. All right, there are a bunch of different kinds of mangroves in the world, but the ones around me are called red mangroves. Why red mangroves? I honestly have no idea, but I do know that there's some pretty cool trees. All right, so in the world of mangroves, you got white mangroves that look pretty normal, black mangroves, which are a little strange. You got a couple other kinds that may or may not exist, and red mangroves, which are definitely the craziest looking mangroves out there. I mean, for one thing, check it out. They look like they have a bunch of little tiny trunks that are tangled up in a big old mess. These are actually roots called prop roots or stilt roots. Yeah, so even though they're above ground, they're actually part of the root system of the tree. It's like a super special kind of root called a prop root. And they're pretty important to the function of the entire tree. Without these prop roots, red mangroves wouldn't survive. And neither would this entire Florida coastline. So we're right near the ocean right now, and tides, waves, and storm surges beat down really hard on the coast. What these prop roots do is they slow things down a little, kind of like a break wall at the beach. They cause sediment to settle down, and check it out. This actually pushes the coastline out quite a bit because it prevents dirt and stuff from getting washed away. Yeah, so this is all kind of cool. I mean, they keep the land in place. Pretty neat, but I mean, that just seems to come as a result of the way they're shaped. The question is, why are they shaped that way in the first place? So this is actually a tough question, but we think we figured it out. So let's give it a shot. All right, strap on those goggles. Let's do this. Safety science, take four. Rolling. Cool, cool, cool. So why are red mangroves shaped so weird? Well, this is why. Because trees need oxygen to survive. Which is a little counterintuitive, right? Because everyone knows trees release oxygen as a result of photosynthesis. Well, that's true, but they do use a little bit of oxygen, too, for the same reasons that we do. It's called respiration, or basically the process of burning fuel or energy. It looks like this. So we have energy or fuel in the form of carbs and fats, and to that, we add some stuff like oxygen. And boom, that's when the magic happens. We burn that energy fuel to run our bodies. So plants do this pretty much in the same way. And in cells that perform photosynthesis, like in the leaves and branches, it's no real problem at all because the oxygen that they make allows them to burn that energy fuel. But what about in the cells that don't perform photosynthesis, like the cells in the roots? They can't make oxygen down there, so what happens? How do they use up energy? Well, most trees get a bit of oxygen from the tiny bit of air that exists in the dirt. They just soak it right up. So, boom, respiration can happen down there without any issues. But mangroves can't do this because they live in water, which actually kind of presents a major problem because it's super hard to get oxygen when you're underwater, which is tough because remember, trees need oxygen. So let's pretend that our little tree here is growing in some water. And since that soil is completely submerged, there's no air down there. You know how you or I can't breathe underwater? Neither can these roots. They can't get the oxygen they need. They can't use up the energy fuel. Respiration like straight up doesn't happen. The roots die, the whole tree's dead, and everything is just completely horrible. Unless you have prop roots. Oh man, prop roots, major game changer. Turning everything around for the red mangroves. So we need to get some oxygen to those underwater roots somehow. And the prop roots stretch all the way above the water Water line where they can get to that oxygen. So prop roots kind of act like a snorkel providing oxygen to parts of the plant that are underwater. They soak up oxygen above the water and transport it down to the roots below the water. Yeah, right? That's exactly what we're looking for. So now all that energy fuel can be added with that oxygen. Let chemistry do its thing, you know, little reaction here, little reaction there, and... <laughs> We're burning that energy fuel, no problem. So breaking it down super simply, roots need oxygen. Roots in water can't get oxygen. Prop roots supply oxygen to underwater roots. 
boom, done, that easy. So all this is pretty neat, but we can't talk about mangroves without mentioning the coolest plant trait possibly slash most definitely ever. The most amazing thing about mangroves is the way that they make more mangroves. One word, viviparity. Viviparity, how mangroves make more mangroves. This is gonna blow your mind. But first, let's think about the way that most trees make more trees. All right, so most trees develop seeds, drop them to the ground, and then those seeds start growing only after they're away from the tree. Yeah, that makes sense. Like trees make seeds, then they drop them to the ground, and then those seeds grow. Seems pretty straightforward. Like an oak tree makes acorns that fall to the ground and then they grow in the dirt. That's how they make more oak trees. But to make more mangroves, mangroves do something that's just a little different. It's called vivipary. Their seeds germinate and start growing before they've even fallen off the tree. So this is what mangrove seed pods look like. And you can see they're still on the mangrove tree, but they've already started growing. They have little leaves on the top and on the bottom they have these tiny little tiny roots. So here's the basic journey of a mangrove seed pod. If we zoom in on this mangrove a bit, we can see that it has some seed pods already. Sweet, and they look like they have roots too. Awesome, they're alive and growing already. Eventually, they'll fall off the tree into the water. Well, they'll float downstream a bit until they hit a nice piece of soil and anchor themselves there with their already existing roots. Then they'll keep growing. So it's almost like they had a head start a little. Not sure about you guys, but this kind of blew my mind. Just sit back and think about that for a bit. This is basically the plant equivalent of live birth. The seeds germinate and develop roots before they even leave the tree. Charlie's getting pretty hyped up. So is our scientist. We're pretty into mangroves over here. So boom, viviparity. Live tree birth, mangroves. Hammers, Kirby. Sketchy park signs, canoeing. Awesome.